Hey guys, we are back and this is officially my third episode. Today's episode is going to be a little challenging, at least for me. I personally have struggled with nostalgic depression. As you can see from the title, that is something that we are going to talk and hash out today. And I four different coping strategies for nostalgic depression. Let's get started. Nostalgic depression is the negative emotions that you are experiencing presently when you think about the past, such as regret, you probably know what nostalgia means. It's sentimental feelings when thinking about memories or the past. But if you have nostalgic depression or nostalgic sadness, you are thinking about the past or can't let go of something in the past that you are holding on to and it's actually producing negative emotions. I actually didn't know it was a thing. <laughs> I've heard depression, I've heard nostalgia, but I have never heard of them combined. I have experienced it. I have some regrets, but I have more nostalgic depression when I think about things I long for or wish I had back in the past. And I can't be the only one who's experiencing this. That's why I made this YouTube video. I hear my dog begging at the door. I'm gonna go let her in. I'll be right back. Okay, she's back in and I hope she doesn't make too much noise for this video. <laughs> I at least want to share a little bit of insight into how I experience nostalgic depression, just in case it's relatable to anything that you're going through. I have teenagers. I have an 18 year old who's moved out and is now going to college. It's crazy. I never thought this day would come. First of all, I'm experiencing some reminiscing because my firstborn has moved out. And when I look back and I long for the days when all three of my kids were younger, I miss those days so much. I was blessed at that time when they were young to not have to work. I was able to be home with them, raise them. I was with them all the time. When I was going through those motions, I didn't realize how much of an impact it was having on my life. And the older they get, the harder it is for me to let go of that. I never thought I was gonna be one of those moms that really struggled with empty nesting. Although two of them are still here in our house, it's just challenging because they're teenagers. <laughs> so something else without going into too many details, I have been through a divorce. It is very traumatic. Another thing is I've moved a lot. When you've lived in a certain place for a certain period of time where you have a level of comfort and then you up and move. Let's say there's things about the new place that are not easy or they don't have the same comfort level or they don't have the same people or your family. You can long for those days where you used to live, for that town, for those people, for just the comfort of home. I have found that I struggle with feeling depressing thoughts about my current situation. I don't really so much anymore, but I have experienced that before. So that might be something that you can relate to. It could be a death of a close relative or friend that you love. You can look at those memories and be filled with sadness, regret, joy. When it starts to affect your present in a negative way, that's when it becomes nostalgic depression. So number one, choose appreciation for the present. This is a mindset. I think it's so important. It is a choice to think about the things that you're thankful for right now. My husband and I like to go on nightly walks. We don't do it every day. We try to, we have a dog, so it's like an excuse, but personally, I need those walks. I love those walks. One of the things that we like to do is tell each other a few things we're thankful for. It can be as simple as, I am so grateful that I get 10 minutes to go walk outside. I'm so grateful that I live in a free country. I'm so grateful for you. Train your mind to be thankful. I'm not gonna be thinking about anything that I'm sad about. I'm not gonna be longing for something in the past in that moment. Me longing for things in the past was actually keeping me from being grateful for what I have today. For example, my son who's in college, I miss him. He lives so close, but he's so busy going to school. I'm busy with work. Sure, I miss him and long for him and sad that he's not home anymore, but I can be appreciative that he's going to college. I can be thankful that he got a scholarship. I can be thankful 
that he really cares about his school and he's doing great and he's studying hard. If you've been through a traumatic experience, I'm so sorry. And I might not be able to personally relate, but I have been through some traumatic experiences myself. One thing that I can at least say I'm thankful for is the newfound strength that I have because of things I've been through. That might not heal 100% of any of the trauma you've experienced, but it's one step closer to healing. Being grateful for who you are today. You can say to yourself, wow, I I've been through that. Maybe you'll be around somebody in the future who's going through what you went through and you'll be able to help them cope through it. You'll be able to find new strength. I guarantee you, you are stronger than you were then because you survived. When I made the decision to be thankful for the things around me, even if they don't compare in my mind, even if they don't seem as good, every day there are more things that I realize I'm grateful for. With that, I started to find healing. Number two, keep a journal. This is something that really worked amazing for me. This is something that you will have that is actually tangible for you to look at in the future. One thing that I do when I feel nostalgic depression is I look back on my journal and I'm able to see the struggles that I was experiencing, that it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows like my mind is tricking me into thinking it was. If I'm disappointed in my present and I start longing for my past, I need to remind myself that my past wasn't all amazing. It was challenging. There were hardships. There was depression. There was unsatisfaction and discontentment. It's a really good way for your future self to look back on today and remember how many good things you had in your life now. If there was someone in your life that you lost, you'll be able to look back and go, wow, I had such a great relationship with that person. Wow, that person taught me so much. Or even if it was hard and, and you have regrets in, in your relationship with that person, you'll at least look back and you'll be able to tangibly hold a journal or if you have it on your phone you'll be able to read your emotions and go wow i really learned my lessons i'm not going to treat that person that way or i'm not going to let somebody treat me that way again you'll have grown or you'll at least start learning how to grow when you look back and remember how it really was or if you had a great relationship with that person look at all the beautiful memories that you'll be able to read about when you start feeling like you're longing for that person, it's okay if you long for that person, you'll have some memories that you can always keep with you. As you're on the road of healing, I think that those memories will be easier to look back on and read about and share with other people in your life. A great way for you to grow personally is by keeping a guided journal. If all you want to do is just keep a journal to write in once a week, once a day, once a month, and it's not guided, there's no questions, that's fine. That's great and I think you should do it. But there's also something called guided journals which have questions or promptings. They have them in apps for your phone. They have them physically. Apps are easy but the physical journal, I mean, maybe it's because I'm 38 but I just think there's something amazing and beautiful about handwritten letters and journals. There's a journal called Better Everyday Journal that I recommend. I'm going to link everything that I'm sharing about below in the description. There's also a journal called the Joy Wellness Journal. These two I'll link. These are physical journals. There's also journal apps that you can keep. I used to write in one called Day One. There's also one called Prompted Journal. These are apps that you can download on your phone. Again, I'll link them in the description for you. I would just do it even if you only write in it 10 times, your future self will enjoy looking back and reading them. I'm so thirsty today. Okay, number three, write it down. If you do not have a journal, but you are struggling with looking back and longing for the past, whether that's a person, a place you used to live, an experience you had, a long-term job you had, whatever it is, you start longing for something. You write it down, not just I'm longing for this today. Write down or type up what that day looks like and feels like and what you remember about it and who is with you in your life and how you felt and any experience that you can think of, anything that you can write down and get it on paper, there's a lot of power in that. I have done that. <laughs> there's so much release and healing in that. I hope that you try it. I hope that that brings some sort of healing to you through it. 
And number four, try something new. If you are finding negative emotions in your present and you are not changing a thing, how do you expect it to change? It's not going to change. If you do the same thing every day and you're unsatisfied and unhappy, it's never going to change. I see it as an opportunity to grow. I see it as an opportunity to end up falling in love with a new hobby or a new talent that you never knew you had. My parents are recently retired. My dad retired for the second time. You should see their craft room. It's like they've got paint supplies everywhere and art supplies and their computer and their printer. And like it, the whole room is just covered with art. It's awesome. And they're doing that together and they're traveling together and they ride their ATVs once a week and go out camping every week. I mean, they're crazy having fun. And I'm sure it's probably not easy for my dad to be retired. I mean, I can't imagine working my practically my whole life. He enlisted in the Navy when he was like 17. How challenging it would be to just suddenly not work. So you better find new things to do or you'll just sit on a couch in front of Fox News and get depressed. <laughs> if you're lonely, step out of your comfort zone. There's so many ways to meet people. If you wanted to learn how to sew, or dance, or even if you just like hiking, but you don't want to go alone, there's hiking meetup groups. If you're just sick and tired of being sick and tired, it's time to start doing something new. Even if it's baby steps, even if that means you're going to pick up the phone and call your siblings that you haven't talked to in forever or something crazy like skydiving. Do something new to branch outside of your comfort zone if you want to experience change. Sometimes just being around other high energy, happy people is all you need to find some growth and healing. Well, that is all I have for you today. I'm so sorry if this was such a hard video. I promise not all my videos are gonna be like heavy. But if I helped just one of you, <gasps> That made my day. I just wanna know I'm not alone and you're not alone. Until the next video, I hope you have an amazing week. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, share. Really appreciate it. Until the next one.